Let's take a look at SciCheck on factcheck.org and get the facts behind some false and misleading scientific claims. Here is former Texas Governor Rick Perry talking about energy at CPAC. During that same period of time, using thoughtful incentive-based regulations, we decreased our nitrogen oxide levels, which by the way is a real pollutant, it's a real emission. Nitrogen oxide levels were down by 62.5%, ozone levels were down by 23%, Sulfur dioxide levels down by 50%, and our CO2 levels were down. Whether you believe in this whole concept of, of climate change or not, CO2 levels were down by 9% in that state. We put policies in place that helped remove old, dirty, burning diesel engines from the fleets. Perry pointed to policies that upgraded old diesel engines, but the nitrogen oxide figures he cited actually exclude vehicles, and transportation sector CO2 rose over the time frame in question. The CO2 reduction was largely due to a decline in the manufacturing sector. Governor Perry also said that Texas transitioned toward natural gas in its power supply. We were able to transition our electrical power system in to the natural gas burning. I mean, that ought to be our goal in this country. But the percentage of natural gas actually declined. Wind power, meanwhile, grew dramatically, thanks in large part to federal policy. Let's look at another energy claim. Under the Clean Power Plan, will EPA grant a waiver or exception if there is a grid reliability risk or a high cost to the ratepayer issue that would happen? Yeah, EPA does not see the rule as it's currently been proposed to have an impact on reliability. That's debatable. Reliability refers to the electricity grid's ability to avoid disruptions to electricity supply. In short, a reliable grid is one that doesn't have a lot of power outages. This depends on a number of factors, and the concerns regarding reliability and the clean power plan stem primarily from the fact that certain power plants will likely be forced to close earlier than otherwise planned. Some of the companies that are responsible for maintaining the electrical grid across wide regions of the country have expressed concerns, while others think it won't be a problem. There is no one simple answer as to whether the clean power plan will negatively impact reliability of electricity delivery, in part because the plan does not prescribe exactly how the cuts in emissions should be achieved. Because there are varying pads available to achieve the clean power plan's targets, the grid's resulting reliability is hard to predict. It is clear, though, that McCarthy's statement is an oversimplification of a complicated topic. Let's shift gears and look at this claim from Senator Rand Paul. I suggested a few things. For example, remember when we were talking about Ebola last year? Everybody's going crazy about Ebola. They're like, oh, Republicans didn't spend enough at the NIH, and they didn't spend enough on infectious disease. Turns out uh, the budget had been going up for years and years at NIH. The budget had been going up for infectious disease. That's not accurate even in raw dollars. The budget was lower in raw dollars in 2014 and 2015, 30.1 and 30.3 billion dollars respectively, than it was in 2010 when it reached a high of 31.2 billion. And when adjusted for inflation, the budget has actually decreased over the last decade. You know how much they spent on Ebola? One fortieth of the budget was being spent on Ebola. But you know what we did discover? They spent a million dollars trying to determine whether male fruit flies like younger female fruit flies. <laughs> I think we could have polled the audience and saved a million bucks. When the senator suggested the NIH wasted one million dollars on a study of whether male fruit flies prefer older or younger females, he belittled the impact of basic research using flies, which has yielded dozens of discoveries and even a few Nobel Prizes over the last century. And Hugo Bellin, a Drosophila expert at Baylor College of Medicine, points out that fly research is among the cheapest available, which means we can learn more from every dollar we spend on flies than we can with other animals. To see more, take a look at SciCheck on factcheck.org. SciCheck is made possible by a grant from the Stanton Foundation.